promised you guys that I would film a getting to know me better kind of video or like an answering people's questions kind of video. Last videos I recorded like get to know me kind of videos, I feel like I was literally a different person in those videos so I feel like get to know me again, right? Because people change, shit happens. Not shit happens, good things happen. Very good things happen. Anyway, moving on. Somebody said, do you find that it's your Instagram website or videos that attract brands to work with you the most? Also, what has been your favorite job opportunity collaboration that you've ever experienced? Love your work, girl. Thank you very much. Um, Instagram website or videos, I feel like it's everything. I feel like my Instagram and my website is so popular or I mean popular in, it's relatively popular. You can't be like, oh, I'm so popular. Um, I feel like it's relatively popular because I do make videos because videos help people kind of really connect to you. If you notice a lot of YouTube bloggers have an amazing following because people feel like they're actually their friends. Whereas if you compare it to like a typical fashion blogger, they don't have that great of a following. Even though their style might be amazing, people just don't feel like they're friends with them. They feel like they don't know them that well, so they don't follow them or I don't know. Engagement is not as much. Like if a lot of my photos on Instagram have like literally 140,000 likes. And a lot of people who have like 2 million followers on Instagram have like 30,000 likes. And I'm not saying they bought their followers. I'm just saying people follow them because they're famous, but they don't follow them because they're interested in them or they, you know, they don't like connect to them, so I feel like that's, I don't know, but basically Instagram. One of the coolest things that's ever happened to me is I suppose you could use this as like a tip if you're a fashion blogger or if you're just a person on the Instagram world. Um, always tag brands if you're, if you're wearing like, I don't know, H&M or Zara or whatever. Always tag them in the photo. First of all, that kind of lets your audience know what you're wearing because I tagged Fendi and then Fendi found me and I went to their fashion show in Milan. I went to their amazing event during New York Fashion Week. I was sitting next to Karl Lagerfeld and like Anna Wintour and Rihanna and I was like, okay, just because I tagged them on Instagram. Well, no, I mean, obviously it goes deeper, but just always make sure that you tag brands because I feel like Instagram nowadays is everything and I just I remember like four years ago when people were like oh Instagram is gonna be over soon there's gonna be something new and I'm like what it's so basic and so necessary that I feel like nothing could ever replace it and so far nothing has quite done the trick so Instagram is incredibly important what is my favorite color my favorite color is still white it has always been white I love everything white everything clean and pure and I also love huh, clean and pure I love dirty pink like a dusty kind of gray light pink. Uh, people are asking me how I edit my videos and how I edit my photos. I edit my photos on a lot of different apps. Honestly, I know some people just use like, actually Instagram is getting really good for editing photos. Like their new editing thing with Gigi, like it's just amazing. I love all their new effects. But my favorite apps are um, VSCO Cam, Afterlight, and there's this Russian app called Glitch, which is pretty cool. I don't know, I just sit there and like glitch all my photos like all day when I'm on airplanes. So yeah, but basically Afterlight is probably my favorite. I've been using Afterlight forever and how I do my frames. I use Square Ready for frames. I'll write the apps down below so you guys can find them easier. And yeah, I use Final Cut Pro for video. Anonymous asked, why do you want to dispose your appearance? Do you feel like it deflects from you as a person or people only see it? How do I explain this properly? I don't know. I I always talk about how I want to be a ghost. Like that's, it started as people asking me like, if you could have one superpower, what could it be? And I'd be like, oh, I want to be a ghost. I want to be invisible. And that kind of grew into me. Sometimes I just walk around the street and I literally close my eyes and I pretend I don't, I'm not real. Like, I don't know. And it's also cause sometimes, sometimes I just sit and relax and meditate if you shall call it. And I close my eyes and then I open them and I'm like, shit, I'm real. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Um, I also feel like 99% of my problems or the reasons why I'm not happy are because of my physical appearance, are because of the doubts I have about my physical appearance or about comparisons I have due to physical appearance. And also because we don't choose our physical appearance, right? We can choose the way we react to situations and the way that we treat people. And I think it's unfair that people get bullied because they have big noses or weird faces or whatever, you know, like unusual features because we're born with it and we don't get to choose it. It's not fair that our first impressions on people are based on things that we do not get to choose. Um, and I feel like I would just be so much happier if I was a spirit or if I was invisible. If we could, if I don't know how that would work, if we could just communicate telepathically or like just with our personalities, you know what I mean? I just wish I didn't exist physically, if you know what I mean. I don't know. Sonia, why don't you get a Snapchat? Um, I actually 
the last thing I think I need on earth is a Snapchat because I have so much social media and I'm, it's also my job. So I feel like it's literally, it's, I don't know, it can drive you crazy. You have so much and I share so much. And also being a vlogger, I kind of share a lot of my life with people and then they feel qualified to criticize, not even criticize, but like, diag, what's the word? Diagnose me with like certain mental, physical, I don't know, they'll be like, oh, Sonia, you're like this because you have this and this and this happened in your childhood. And I'm like, do you know me? Like, well, you don't know what happened in my childhood. And I feel like if I had Snapchat, I would just be sharing way too much of my personal life with people. And it also turns me off completely when I'm with friends and they Snapchat our like private conversations or like whatever we're doing. Cause I'm like, do we really need another social media thing to tell you what you're doing at the exact moment? Like, can't we just live in life? Maybe take a picture like, and then post it later on Instagram. Like, do we need to real time share with friends and tell them that we're fun? I don't know, maybe I don't get Snapchat and that's totally not the idea of it but I just feel like I don't need to share <laughs> any more than I already do. I'm trying to share less. Do you like Angelina Jolie? I love Angelina Jolie. Um, my favorite movie, I actually don't have a lot of favorite movies, but my favorite movie is Girl Interrupted with Angelina Jolie. I think she is incredible and beautiful and like beautiful as a whole, beautiful as a beat, not necessarily even about appearance, but yeah, I do like Angelina Jolie a lot. Which book or quote has changed the way you used to think? Uh, I was very immersed in quotes and such when I was young and I feel like quotes, I don't know, maybe it's stupid, people think it's like super white girl and Tumblr or whatever to be so into quotes and I just love quotes, I don't know, I feel like I read something and I connect to something so well, Scott, uh, what's his face? There's a quote that I really like from uh, Scott Fitzgerald and it goes, this is part of the beauty of literature, you discover that your longings are universal longings and that you're not lonely and isolated from anyone, you belong. And I completely agree with that because you can read a quote, you can read something and it can touch you so much and you feel like, damn, I'm not the only person going through this. Someone has been through this, someone has come out of it alive, someone has gotten wiser from it. So I, I, I don't know what quote, uh, go to my Tumblr. That's every single Tumblr quote. Like one of the quotes on my Facebook from like 2008 was, stupid choices make good stories. I don't actually do that many stupid things. But I mean, it's like true, right? I'm also reading through a lot of amazing, amazing, amazing comments from people telling me they appreciate me and they love me. And thank you so much. I appreciate and love you guys so much too. Honestly, thank you. I just, I'm not gonna read it because I feel like it sounds really weird if I sit here and half the video is like, I love you, Sonia, you know, so thank you. Thank you very much. Fake it till you make it is also one of my favorite quotes because it's literally true in regards to confidence and stuff and oh my gosh, the law of attraction. Everything I post on Instagram too, if there's a quote on my Instagram, that means it's like changed my day, changed my week. How do I tell if something is my passion? Uh, I know a lot of people are like, Sonia, I know you say to like follow your dreams and do whatever you're passionate, but what am I passionate about? I feel like a lot of us overanalyze so many things, like passions, because we hear other people being like, I'm passionate about singing, and they're like, frick, like I'm not, like what am I passionate about? It's literally anything that you do in your spare time. Like, what do you do to escape? Do you play video games? Do you sing? Do you dance? Do you write music? Do you just write? Do you listen to music? I don't know, things that you do and you love it and they inspire you and make your life easier and better, I feel like those are your passions. Or things that you would do regardless if you were paid or not, probably even you would pay to do them. Um, and also I feel like a lot of people look way too deep into the concept of love. They're like, hmm, do I love him? Do I not? And then sometimes I ask friends, I'm like, do you love him? And they're like, I don't know. I'm like, okay, well then you don't. Because if you love somebody, then you know. It's like, you can't escape it. It's like it is and period. It's a fact and it's unavoidable and it's unavoidable. That's how it is. Um, and same with passions. I feel like it's just always been there with you and maybe look into things that you did when you were younger. Like when I was younger, I used to write so many books. I used to put paper together, fold it in half, staple it, and then just like write novels. And that's always been one of my passions is writing. And I'm still gonna probably, I mean not probably, I will one day write a novel or a book or something. What kind of music do you like? I have a SoundCloud that you guys can check out. Um, I've been listening to all music on SoundCloud lately. I'll leave the link below. But in short, what kind of music do I like? Totally depends on my mood. I love Deep House. I, if I'm not in the mood to be in a good mood, which Deep House and like, oh God, what's EDM? If I'm not in like the EDM Deep House kind of mood, then I love like acoustic music and sad 
like violin and piano music. But anything basically that has a nice melody, I'm totally for it. Favorite animal? My favorite animal is a goat. Indeed. I love goats. Baby goats are my everything. Do you like to be a sexy? Anonymous asked. Yes, Anonymous, I like to be a sexy. A sexy. Just the sexy. Anonymous asked me, who do I travel with? Um, I always travel alone. I'm always on airplanes alone, um, but I always have friends or a job in a city where I'm traveling. So as soon as I land, I can call somebody or hang out with somebody. I'm never actually in a city alone wherever I travel, which is amazing. What is my favorite magazine? My favorite magazine is Company Magazine. And if you didn't know, I'm actually writing for them. Really the most amazing thing probably that's happened to me in so long, I cannot believe. Okay, actually Company is literally my favorite magazine in the world because I actually read their magazine. Like, I'm not gonna name names, but certain amazing high fashion magazines, I mean, they're amazing to look at visually, but you don't actually read the articles, or I don't at least, I find them boring. Company, I can read through and connect to everything. It's amazing when you like somebody and they like you back. Like, it's like that's the best feeling ever. And company likes me back and they let me write a column on the website. So I'm like, I made it. it. Started from the bottom. Now we're here. Somebody asked me if I enjoy fashion weeks. Um, because initially my, if you were my friend, I would be like, no, fashion week, I hate fashion week. Cause I, literally it's like, when I was in school, the thing I dreaded the most was exams. I hated exams, I hated exams before I even had to take them. And when I just found out about them when I was seven years old, I'm like, oh, hell no, that's not happening. So, I mean, Fashion Week is amazing. It's necessary, it's amazing, it's incredible, it's glamorous if you're calm, but I'm not calm and I push myself and I'm so self-critical and I always wanna do my best. I always wanna have the best outfits and sometimes that means me wearing mini skirts and negative 20 degrees Celsius and getting sick and, it's a lot of traveling, it's a lot of planning, and I don't have a helper and assistant, so I have to do everything by myself. So it's really hard. If you, But the thing is, it sounds stupid, right? It's like fashion week, it's amazing, it's beautiful. It's an amazing opportunity that not everybody gets, and I am so, so freaking grateful for it. But I feel like I have to take it easier because a lot of the bigger fashion bloggers, if you notice, they don't actually go to all the fashion weeks because it just gets insane. No matter what job you have, even if you have the best job in the world, you're still gonna have something to complain about. You're still gonna have problems. You're still gonna have problems. You're still gonna find, I mean, literally everything in this world is balanced. You can't have everything amazing without struggling. You know, it's like even the happiest people, they have big ass problems. I think it's important to go to fashion weeks with friends because when I'm with friends, it just gets so much more fun when you're going to the same shows together and etc. Oh, but it's also fun to see your favorite vloggers and to meet your friends again and photographers and stuff. So it's fun, of course. It's like camp, it's like summer camp for bloggers. Yes, if you want me to talk about Fashion Week or like make a video about Fashion Week, how to get into Fashion Week, how to get invited to shows or whatever, or just anything that you guys have questions about, because I feel like my audience on the English YouTube is just more into fashion blogging and I don't know, whatever you guys want. Just leave me comments below into what kind of videos you want. And I promise I'll get a nice camera and I'll film actual videos. And the last question I'm gonna answer for today, somebody asked, are you afraid of changes and how to be open to new things? Uh, when I first saw this question, I thought the person was literally joking or like trying to make a joke out of me because I am the woman of change. I like literally, I get high off of change when I know that, oh my God, I'm gonna change this about myself. This is gonna be my goal of the week. I'm gonna dye my hair, I'm gonna whatever, whatever. That literally makes me so happy. Anything that has to do with change, I'm like all over it. Like I die for change. And that's actually bad and I have to learn to change that because I literally cannot sit in one place for too long and that's horrible of me. I need to learn to sit my ass down in a city for a month and just be with the people that I love and you know. Anyway, I'm insane. I love change. Really funny story. I feel like when I was in like middle school, I used to think I was shy. Like I literally thought I was a shy kid. Whereas now I'm literally just every single person that I know, I've only known them for like two years or like they're a new friend of mine and everywhere I go, I talk to people and I hold no secrets. Like I can, if I meet you on the street and I can tell you my life story, I can tell you anything that I can tell my mom and my dad and my closest friends. Cause I literally have nothing to hide. I don't keep things from anybody. If you if you ask me, I'll tell you. If you want to be open to new experiences, if you want to attract good things, then you have to be open to people and you have to create an atmosphere that is welcoming and friendly and nice. I mean, how many times have you went up to somebody and just been so turned off because they're like, they seem like they're holding in their feelings or they're holding in their thoughts or like maybe they don't like me, maybe this, maybe that. Like that's not pleasant. You don't want to work with people like that. You don't want to be around people like that. So don't be a person like that. Just literally 
erase that part of your brain that thinks that you're shy and fake it till you make it. So just tell people, just be completely open. Like, what are you going to lose? I swear to God, if you're just friendly and open to people, like, they'll like you. It's so simple. You don't understand, like, how many castings have I been on? How many, like, high-end designers have I met where by the end of our meeting, they're like, holy crap, you're so nice. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, isn't, what the fuck? You don't understand how many snobby people there are in, like, the fashion industry and how many people I try to talk to, but they don't, they look like they're not even there. They're too busy putting up, like, a facade of, like, high fashion, like, I'm this and this, I'm a shy person, I'm like, Screw all the labels. You're not a shy person. You're not an outgoing person. You're not an introvert. You're not an extrovert. You're not a this or that. You're literally just yourself. The minute you stop putting labels on yourself is the minute you free yourself from all of that and the minute you can actually be yourself and attract people who are like you or who are nice. Stop telling yourself you're shy. Tell yourself you're open. Tell yourself everybody is kind and nice and good things will happen to you and good things will come your way. So yeah. I hope you guys like this video. I hope it didn't turn you guys too off that it's on my MacBook. I've literally never filmed a video on my MacBook in all my years on YouTube, never. But desperate times call for desperate measures. Is that how the quote goes? I don't know. So yeah, I'm gonna go buy Diet Coke and hang out with my friend now in Moscow. Peace, I love you guys. Mwah.